Hi everyone, I'm Tom. Today I'm going to be playing Paws and Padlocks, which is a light uh, family game, possibly think of it as an introduction to dungeon crawlers. Hi everyone, I forgot to mention some things at the start of this. This is on Kickstarter right now, so you can go and check out the Kickstarter page. I'll put a link in the corner of the screen so you can go and see and see if you'd like to back it and see what the final things are like, because the other thing I didn't mention, this, this, this is all prototype stuff. Uh, and finally, if you go on Klingon subtitles, if there are Klingon subtitles for this video, then I have made some mistakes and the Klingon subtitles will show you where I went wrong. But back to the playthrough. So we are these heroes. I am Nick the Knight and I'm playing against Glass Marty, who is Apple the Archer. And we are going to be going through this dungeon here, trying to get to our particular treasures. I need the Uzi Opal and that is over here. Oh, it's actually here. Okay, so that's in front of me. And then Marty needs the Pearl of Pollution, which is in front of him. Well, let's, let's mix these up. It's a little bit too easy if it's all just in front of us. Let's mix it up a bit. So the way a turn works is there are two keys available of each color to you on the start of your turn. And you have to pick three keys and they will basically allow you to do things to rooms of that color. And it's kind of a difficulty thing. You know, the gold rooms are harder, but they will give you better rewards. So I think I am going to be cowardly and I'm gonna pick two bronze and a silver to start with. And how can you spend these keys? You can find a new room, which is drawing from the decks and putting them uh, connecting to a room that already exists. You can unlock rooms if they become locked later. You can rotate rooms that you're in or you're adjacent to. You can unlock chests in rooms that you're in. And you can also spend a key to come to the Wander Inn. And you can do two of these actions here, turning gems into items or items into gems, gems into health, or these crystal keys that are potentially the most important thing because to be able to get our treasure, we need to unlock the vault with three crystal keys. But let's see what happens. I have got these keys now. I'm gonna use my first bronze key to open a bronze room. So I'm here and it's just an empty room. So I have to put it somewhere where I, could, I can actually go into it, but I can, uh, I can rotate it later. So I could now use my other bronze to just rotate this if I wanted to, but I need to kind of work my way across, so I might as well carry on this way. I'll use my other bronze to open a new bronze room, and it's another empty one. So I can come here, and then I think I'm gonna put a silver room up here. So, new silver one from the deck, and this is the first one that's not a room. This is an item that I've found. So I draw from the item deck and I have found love potion number eight. And it is on your turn, take a crystal key from another player with more crystal keys than you. Well, at the moment, neither of us have got any, so that doesn't matter. And that's the end of my turn. Marty, I think he's gonna go bold. He is going to, well, he's gonna go a little bit bolder. He's gonna do two silvers and a gold. So his first silver is a battle. He has found a slime assassin. Whenever you find slimes, you need to fight them. So he rolls two dice, and it doesn't matter which dice in this case, and we're looking at the top of the dice. See, they've either got rewards on the bottom or a number on the top. We're just interested in the number for the fight. Marty has a special ability as Apple the Archer. During slime time, which is what this is, if he rolls a zero, he can turn it into a five. So zeros are okay for him. So let, he wants a six or higher to beat this guy. He's got three and five, that's eight. He beats the slime assassin and he gets himself an item. Lip bomb, and on your turn, remove up to two rooms on the board so he could remove my way back because we need to steal the treasure and get back out of the entrances. Then three gems. And you can use these later at the Wander Inn to do more things. So that was just his first thing, wasn't it? He'll open another silver room and he finds an event. That ticket means an event happens. So what have we got? Merchant's reward, all players gain a crystal key. Oh, so we are a third of the way to having enough to get into the vaults. And finally, he's got a gold key. So he's gonna use that to open a gold room and it's an event. So what have we got? Reliving rooms, shuffle each room discard pile and place them face down on top of their decks. So we know that there is an event on the top of the gold deck now and uh, an item, an event and a fight on top of the silver deck. Back to me, I'm gonna keep going bronze because I know that things haven't been put on top of the bronze deck. So two bronzes and it's gonna be an event if I go gold. Might as well go gold. 
so bronze, let's go. It is a room, but it's a treasure chest room. So in here, I could spend my other bronze key to open this chest and get a reward. Basically, I would get an item or I can just forge ahead. Let's, let's grab an item and let's see what happens. So I've spent my other bronze key. I roll the bronze dice and here we're looking at the bottom. I have found an item. I could have found gems. I could have lost a health, uh, more gems. I could have found a crystal key, which would have been really helpful, but I found an item. And this is repeater bread. And on your turn, take an item card from the discard pile and add it to your hand. So if somebody uses something useful, I can get it back. And gold, we know, I think, is going to be an event. Yes. And it is recurrent events. This event has the same name as the event on the top of the discard pile. Oh, no. Okay, so that just means we're going to put this event back on the top of this deck. Okay. And that's the end of my turn. Let's see if Marty can move off the start space. He is going to go... Silver's and a bronze, I think. He'll ignore that event that's on the gold. So he'll open a silver room. Oh, he knows that the silvers aren't rooms though, doesn't he? Well, we need to get through them. Event, Gubonic Plague. All players are now at one HP. Well, that's really not good, is it? So our, our HP is five to start off with. We've both just lost a lot of health. We might have to go to the inn and heal ourselves. Next, he will go silver again, and it's an item. He gets, on your turn, lock or unlock up to two rooms on the board. So he could use that to lock the room. If I, if I move ahead, he could lock the rooms behind me. So I have to spend a bit more time coming back out. Finally, he's got a bronze. So he finds his first room and it is a treasure chest room. So you can go in there freely. You can move around freely as long as there's a path. Uh, but he hasn't got any keys left to open that. So that's the end of his turn. As for me, shall I keep being cheap? I think I'm going to keep being cheap, but I will... Uh... Oh, silver's definitely a fight, isn't it? And gold is definitely an event. Let's, let's go for one bronze then and two silvers. Let's see what's underneath the fight. So the bronze is going to be a nice room for me, and it is a nice room because this doesn't connect up with Marty's room, so it doesn't help his path. And I can go up later because my treasure is just straight ahead of Marty. So hopefully he will be making some kind of path that I can then, you know, rotate something and get in on it. He could now use two bronze keys, one to rotate this room and one to rotate this room. And he could end up close to, the, to where he needs to be. So that may not have been the best idea. But let's see how it goes. We've got silvers now. So first silver is a fight. Let's see how I do. So it's just any two dice. I don't have any special things. I decrease HP losses from slimes and chests. I get seven, which beats the six. So I get an item. Eye of the Viper. After any player has rolled any number of dice, you can change the result of one dice into your choice. Then three gems for me. So I could afford to heal myself by two. If you do get knocked out, you lose half your gems, an item, and a crystal key. So I think I might just play it safe and let's get two health back. With my final key, let's spend my three gems and get two health back. Because I don't want to lose that crystal key. Marty's going to go with that plan, I think, because he doesn't want to start a path up here that he can't use. So he's going to pay to rotate this. Oh, we should also, I should also remember that when chests have been opened, you should put this on them to show that they can't be done again. So he's going to pay to rotate that, and then he's going to pay to rotate this one this way, and that, 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 messes, that messes me up because I can't go up anymore. So he can come right along here, rotate this next time, and hopefully just get a path straight up, and he can get straight to an exit on his way out. So he's used his two bronzes, and he had a silver, so let's see what he finds. Oh, he finds a fight. So that's a level five Mimic Slime. And he rolls a five and he treats zeros as five, so he's rolled a 10. Not that he needed it. He has found a do-over watch. On your turn, place a room card from any discard pile face down on top of its deck. So he could play that and make sure that that fight is at the top of the silver deck again. So that's the end of his turn. It comes back to me. I'm gonna take two bronzes and a silver, I think. So I can come into here, I can pay my bronze to rotate it while I'm in here, and then let's do another bronze going up. So, oh, taking silver was silly, wasn't it? Because it's definitely a fight. But at least I'm a bit closer. 
So silver is going to be that six fight again. Let's see what I get. Four plus one, not quite enough. So I lose two health because I lost to the slime sass and I'm back down to one health. So that's, uh, that's something to worry about again. Let's go back to Marty. He is going to get a bronze definitely to rotate that, but then he's going to go big and go gold. So the bronze will rotate this room upwards. So even if he does make, it, make his way up, he's going to have to re-rotate this. Maybe that's not a good idea then. Maybe he should just go in here and build up from here. And then he's got a path straight back that he doesn't have to rotate. Yeah, let's go up from here. Bronze. Oh, he's found a trick room. Now this is going to lock at the end of the round. If he's in it, all adjacent rooms to it lock. But hopefully he's not still going to be in it. So he hasn't really helped himself. Uh, gold, we know the first one's an event, don't we? So the event is castle renovation. Remove all rooms on the board. Oh dear. So this is okay. It's okay. It doesn't apply to rooms that you're in, just like the trick rooms don't. But all of this lovely pathway that we've forged to begin with is now gone. He'll try and find something. He has found a gold treasure room, which he'll go in because otherwise it's going to get locked. And maybe next turn he can unlock that. So at the end of the round, this locks because nobody's in it. And you can spend a bronze key to unlock that in a future turn. As for me, let's let's keep keep bronzing, I think, and then we'll do a silver. Yeah, I'm gonna try really cheap ones and see how it goes. Oh, I found a trick room. This is a vanishing room. So this is just gonna come off the board if, uh, if no one's in it at the end of the round. If I am still in it, then all adjacent rooms will disappear. And it's a slime chest as well. So for a slime chest, you have to roll, you have to spend a crystal key to unlock it. And then after that, you roll all three dice and get all three rewards or penalties. Shall we risk it? Oh, I think it's worth risking it. This room's going to disappear, but there's, there's hardly any rooms anyway. Let's do it. Crystal key spent. Open this chest and let's see what we find. Hopefully it's something amazing. We have got an item and six gems. That's not bad because we can spend these in the future to heal ourselves back up. And get, we could spend five to just get the crystal key back. The item is on your turn, gain all of your lost HP. So I'll use that actually and just go back up to five. I could use this love potion now. Marty's got more crystal keys than me. So I could take one off him. And I think that was my first key. So let's do a silver now, see what's hiding here. Oh no, a slime dragon which is, oh, actually I'm, I'm full health, aren't I? So it's not that bad. Okay, let's roll these dice. And I rolled a seven, which beats the slime dragon. And let's see, stop it. Whenever another player uses an item, ignore the effect of that player's item and discard it, oh dear. And then four more gems. So I've got 10 gems now. So it might be worth with my last bronze going back and getting two more crystal keys. But we can do that in the future. Let's. Let's use the last bronze to try and find another room. And it is a kitty slime. So hopefully we'll beat this. Uh, yeah, we got a seven, so we get a gem. Okay, Marty. He's gonna go big again. Gold, gold, silver, I think. Gold is gonna unlock that chest. Let's roll the gold dice and see what he gets. Six gems. His other one, he'll open a gold room. Oh, he gets a crystal key. So he's got one again now. And then finally, he will do a silver, which is a slime jester. So he needs to roll two dice and beat a four. He gets double zero, which would be terrible. But for him, that's ten because he turns zeros into fives. So the slime jester gives him an item, which is on your turn, take an item at random for another player. He'll do that and he will randomly get the repeater bread. And he gets a gem. And I think that's it for him. We need to put a note up that he opened that chest, but he has won all those fights. Back to me. I am just gonna, I'm just gonna keep going bronze, I think. I... No, let's, we're a bit stronger now. Let's go for two silver and a gold. So what do we find in the gold? We find the Slime King, oh dear. Hmm. I didn't really wanna see that. Let's go then. I get two and a zero. Now I can change a dice to anything, but I think the highest number is five, so I'd still lose. I lose three health, so I'm back down to two now. 
then let's do our silver. Surely these are going to stop being fights. Oh, the, the vanishing thing that I forgot to do should have got rid of this uh, room a long time ago. I've just found another vanishing room, but it does get me further along. That is empty as well. And the final silver, hopefully, is another room. It's an event. So the event is Grand Exchange. Each player passes all of their gems and items to the player on their left at the same time. So I get all of these things. Marty gets the Eye of the Viper. And the gems... Yeah, Marty's gaining about two gems. And that's it. So Marty, I think he'll, he'll give up now and go a bit smaller. He'll go bronze, bronze, gold. Bit of a mixture. Bronze, he finds a slime beetle that surely he can defeat. He rolls a six, he gets two more gems. So if he can just get to the end, he can trade all of this in for the crystal keys. Then his other bronze is going to be two gems without the fight. And his gold, an event. So the event, merchant's gift, all players gain an item. Marty gets the skeleton key, use it as if it was any colored key. So he could use this for another turn now. And then in BLT, uh, when you are defeated by a slime or damaged by a chest, prevent all HP loss. That's quite nice. So Marty will use this as if it was another, another gold. He gets a trick room with a slime chest, but it's something. So he can go in here. And he hasn't got keys to do anything in here. And it does mean that this is going to vanish. But he's getting closer. He's getting a bit closer. As for me, silver, silver, bronze, I think. Let's see, surely we're getting silver rooms. That's an item. So I get Kitana. During slime time, defeat the slime before rolling. That would have been nice before I found that kink. Another silver is another item. The silver's not been good for rooms. And a skeleton key, I will use that for a silver. We're gonna find a silver room, there we go. So, and that brings me right the way to the vault. It would be nice if it was in the picture, wouldn't it? Uh, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have got ten gems. So my last key, my bronze key, I'm going to go to the Wander Inn. Uh, this should have vanished. I'm just trying to think. It's not. Uh, it's not as simple as just going in there. So I'll trade these in for two crystal keys with my two exchanges. Then I will trade in all three of my crystal keys to be able to get into this vault. So here we go, this is what to do to get your treasure. Reveal this card to prove it matches the treasure in the treasure vault. It does. Use the three crystal keys, place the treasure token on this card, and then your turn is over. So it's a good job it was the last thing on the turn. Marty needs a gold to be able to rotate this room, then he will take some silvers. There's gotta be silver rooms, I've got faith in it. So he will use the gold to rotate this room and then let's try and find some silvers. So just a plain sailing silver room. And another one, so he is in the same position. This is gonna lock though at the end of the round, but that's okay. So he's used all of his keys, hasn't he? So unfortunately he can't get to the treasure this round. So he'll just stay here because that's gonna lock. This vanishes, this should have already vanished. And it's back to me. So I have my treasure now. I am going to go bronze all the way, just speed and nothing else. And oh, actually, I need three keys though. Uh, bronze, bronze, silver. So bronze, I find an event. Merchant's Charity, all players gain three gems. That's very nice of him. So I have three now and Marty has Tons, about 17. Uh, another bronze, and that's a nice vanishing room. And finally, silver is a locking room, but the, the vanishing room vanishes before any of that happens. Uh, this room in front of Marty should be locked. So on his turn, he definitely needs a silver. He's only doing two things though. He's gonna unlock that room, then he's gonna go to the merchant and spend his keys. So. One silver unlocks it, then he will go to the merchant with another one. Let's spend 10 gems on two crystal keys. So he's got three, he spends them to go into the vault and he's got his now. So 
so his turn is now over. Unfortunately, at the end of this turn, his turn, this locks. So he's going to have to spend a key to get out on the start of his turn again. As for me, same old tactics, bronze, bronze, silver. Let's see, bronze I have found, bronze KS choice. Uh, this is going to be one that you'll, uh, it's probably going to be a pledge level where you can pick for that, rather than it being an enemy called bronze KS choice. Uh, I will roll higher than a two, which is good. I get some gems. Second bronze is an event. Where are my rooms? I only need two. Random rendezvous. Move all players into the room you are currently in. If you're on a castle entrance, ignore this event and draw a new one. That is fantastic for Marty. Because it doesn't matter which entrance you get to. Okay, it's silver time then. And I have found a chest. I'm not going to move in there because then it'll lock and at least Marty's going to have to unlock it and you know, rotate it or something to be able to get out. Uh, so that locks. Oh, that event has really messed me up. So Marty, he's definitely going to take two silvers and a gold, I think, a gold. So he'll unlock the room with that silver and go in there. He'll rotate it because then I'm locked out as well. So he rotates it with the other silver, and then with his gold, he finds a room. It doesn't matter what's in there because he has made it out with his Pearl of Pollution, and thanks to that event, basically, he has won the game. So that is a game of pause and padlocks. If you'd like to know what I think, then you can click the link on the screen. Uh, the, the Kickstarter is running now. If you'd like to go and check out the page, then you can see it there. Uh, but thanks very much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.